getting to be the end of the summer and that means time for wine cap stropharia to be emerging. In this situation, these wine caps are planted in a bed full of straw. This is just raw straw that was soaked for three days and then laid down as a mulch in the beginning of the summer. A lot of people have some questions about identifying wine cap, so we're going to try to clear some of those questions up today. This wine cap, as you'll notice, has got several different colors, different shades. The wine cap that's older and that's more exposed, it doesn't have as much coverage from the fronds of the asparagus, are lighter, so they're more of a buff color. The ones that are a little more shaded, that are just emerging, they've got a lot more humidity coming up from the soil underneath the straw, are going to be a little bit darker in color, in this case sort of a redder port wine color. One of the identifying characteristics of wine cap is, we'll pick one of the older ones, is the charcoal colored gills. And you can see that as the spores are released from the gills, they're also charcoal colored, which accounts for the reason why the gills are the color they are. You can see the little, the spores are collecting on the base and up around the annulus, making it sort of dark. That's one of the key characteristics is this charcoal color. They start out actually as the, as the spores mature, they gain more color. So as you can see in this situation, the spore color is actually more of a violet color or a, uh, a, a, a lighter gray. Um, so that's one of the characteristics is the spore color. Another really good identifying characteristic for wine cap is this ring, or we call it the annulus. And this is one of the reasons why wine caps are called the king's stropharia, is because this jagged crown looks like a king's crown. Many times on the older specimen, though, you won't even see a crown. Let's take a look at this one. We'll pick it. Whoa, that's not the crown itself. This is just tissue from, that has broken off from the stem. The crown is actually this little remnant right here. And I'm just looking for one of the older specimens. Sometimes the crown will not even be intact at all on the mushroom. See, it's starting to come off here. Um, so the crown is another good identifying characteristic for wine cap. The cap color, of course, on the on the older specimen or on the younger specimens are going to be a little bit redder, and on the older specimens, especially when it's a little bit dry out, they tend to get more buff color. Um, Another excellent identifying characteristic is a slight swelling at the base, not a bulb at all, but of just slight swelling, and then these long remnants, these mycelial fragments, or these rhizomorphs, these little feeder roots coming out from the fungus, which these are actually what's, what's using to translocate all of, the, all of the nutrition from the straw and probably from the soil and other things that are actually making this grow. Um, so let's take one more look at another one. Ah, see, we can see we're just picking the, those nice mycelial remnants there, the, the uh, um, rhizomorphs from the wine cap fungus. It's got the crown, it's got the charcoal color gills, you can see the little bit of spores here collecting under, right directly underneath, and then the wine cap colored cap, and then a little bit of, this is again little remnants from the annulus as the, as the mushroom is starting to develop. Um, one other point to make about this is that uh, what will happen is with this particular bed, there's no wood chips involved, it's all straw. What we'll do is this fall, we'll put another layer of straw down. We won't pre-treat it at all, we won't soak it. We'll just let it settle in, in over, the, over the winter and then in the spring we'll seed some more on the top to start decaying some of the straw and we will put another layer of uh, raw straw just on top just to make the, the top mulch to keep the spawn from drying out underneath and we'll just repeat this cycle year after year. Um, and our thanks to Tantre Farms which is the one who first told us about this super low tech very easy method of just adding straw every year and making sure to seed it every spring before you put in your new layer. So I think I'm going to go collect these and uh, 
I think I will probably just rip off the caps and saute them and have them for breakfast. Now here's some wine cap. These are just coming up and let's take a look at them at their earliest stages. Notice how the when they first come out, there's, there's just the, the cap is completely cupped over, and this is the annulus, and this is actually covering and protecting the gills while the mushroom is starting to grow. And as it expands out, this is what it turns into. The cap starts to get planar, and it allows the gills to mature and drop their spores. So this little crown is kind of, this little, this little uh, annulus is just protecting the gills as it's growing. And so you can see it's starting to uh, separate, and here's the little crown part underneath. And here's my favorite stage to eat these. They, you can just barely see the crown, just little riblets right underneath there. If you cut this off like this, you can eat this little button just as it is. My favorite way to prepare these is to take a whole pan of these little budlets, including the stem, cut it off, you know, above where the, all the soil is, and saute them in a little bit of oil, and if you want to add some other kind of uh, aromatic or some onions or garlic or something, and then add a little bit of broth or water and cover them and let them braise for a little while. They keep their shape, they are delicious, and they're still crunchy, and uh, one of my favorite ways to eat wine cap. This one I would probably harvest right from the base because this stem is going to be nice and stringy and it's not going to be very suitable for braising. And so you'll just take the cap with your knife and with your knife and um, and you could either brush these with oil or um, oyster sauce and grill them whole or else slice them up into uh, into little stripes and add them to whatever dish you like. When you grow wine cap on straw like this, one thing you have to be careful of is they are coming up from under here. And I remember Tantre Farms telling us that some of their employees like to go on, it's almost like an Easter egg hunt. They, they see where the big bubbles are and they part away the straw and, and there's the wine cap. So when you do grow them in a bed like this on a lot of straw, you just have to be careful as you're walking that you might actually be walking on top of some of these little baby mushrooms. So be careful because you want to keep them intact so you can eat their delicious little stems and their little caps whole in a frying pan.